Okay, let's continue. All right, we were having this important discussion about a function that was going increase, that we were talking about the definition of increasing and decreasing functions. So let's just take a picture of what that means. So if I have that sort of function, and I need to decide which way I'm going when I talk about increase and decrease. So we're going to go from left to right like you're reading a book. And that will define whether a function is increasing or de decreasing by the little cart. So if we put the little cart and it's going across the function in this direction, you'll see that the, the hill before is definitely increasing. And then once it gets up here, the little cart is going down, so the function is decreasing. And then once again, it's increasing. So we have to decide whether to do it from left to right or right to left. So we're doing it from left to right, increasing, decreasing, increasing. So we will always evaluate a function like that. All right, let's go ahead continue this discussion. And I want to give you a function similar to what I just had there. We're going to put in another parameter. Let's say we go up to here, down to here, and up to here. The top of the hill is going to be our point A, and the bottom of the hill is going to be our point B. All right, so A and B are of interest, points of interest that I'm indicating. So the way I talk about whether the function is increasing or decreasing is with some um, interval notation. So the interval that will discuss increasing, this function is going to go forever in that direction. So I can say that from negative infinity to A, it's increasing increasing from negative infinity to A. And also, I can say it's increasing from B to positive infinity. This is called interval notation, and if we're not including the endpoints, we use parentheses. If we are, we use brackets. These types of descriptions for increasing and decreasing will have parentheses because it will never include negative infinity and A, right at A, it's not increasing or decreasing, but just up to it. So we're going to use parentheses. And then the decreasing will be the interval from A to B. So notice what I put in these intervals are x values. So the value between A, A x equals A, and x equals B, in that interval, the function is decreasing. All right, let's look at another idea about that. What is happening to the slope or the derivative during these sections? So in all the increasing functions, I'm going to put a few test points and look at the slopes. You see there that the slopes are always in the positive direction. And then up at the top, the slope is zero. Then on the decreasing section, the slopes turn and are negative. And zero out at the bottom, and then the slopes become positive again. So these slopes are what derivatives are. So now we have made an important observation, and that is for an increasing function, the increasing part of the function, f prime, of x is greater than zero. It's a positive number. Decreasing functions f prime of x is less than zero. So that's very important and basic understanding in calculus. At x equals a in this function, at x equals a and at x equals b, the function has a derivative at zero the function's derivative is zero. So these spots are where the function is a derivative of zero are actually 
mark the change between the positive function, the positive sloping function, part of the function, and the negative part of the function. So we have sloped changing at these points. Those points are where the functions zeros, the derivative of the function is zero. So these are going to be the change points, the switching points, the bewitching switching points. All right, so at A and B where the derivative equals zero, then we have the switching points where the derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So let's take that information. Let me get rid of this so I have some more room. And switch over to the, an example. So this is concept, I think, is quite understandable. So we're going to go right to an example of it. So let's see what that looks like. y equals 2x to the third uh, minus 9x squared plus 12x plus 2. All right. Did that show up? Uh, I think it went out. Alright, let me move it over. I need a cameraman. Alright, y equals, what was it again? 2x cubed uh, minus 9x squared plus 12x plus 2. Alright, so with that, we are going to wonder where this function increases and de decreases without using a calculator. So we're going to go ahead and examine that. First of all, because the switching points are very important, let's find where the derivative zeroes out. So I'm going to take the derivative of that using the power rule, and I'm going to set it equal to zero, and I'll factor out the six to help me do that. And divide both sides by 6, and then the 6 goes away. And I can go ahead and factor that and solve. So at x equals 2 and x equals 1, we know that this derivative zeroes out. So I'm going to um, create a number line. And that number line, I'm going to mark on at these points of interest. one and 2. So I'm not really going to sketch this graph tonight. We are going to build up to that, but for now I just want to know what's going on on these intervals. I know that these are switching points, so I'm going to find out what's happening in this part of the function, this one and this one. What's happening when this function is less than 1, between 1 and 2, and greater than 2? So to evaluate that, I'm going to Go ahead and look at um, a test point. So I'm looking at a test point less than 1. So I know if it's increasing on this function, it's increasing on every x less than that because these are the switching points. So it's either going to be increasing on this whole interval from negative infinity to 1 or decreasing on this whole interval from in negative infinity to 1. So any point that I put into the derivative, and I do have to put it into the derivative, not the original, I will can use any test point. So what's a value less than 1 that's fairly easy to put into this function? 0. So when I put 0 in here, so I'm test point, I'm testing 0. When I put it in here, I get 12. So f prime of x equals 12 at that point. I guess we'll say f prime at 0 equals 12. Now, I don't really care that it's 12, but I do care whether it's positive or negative. So it's positive there. So now I need a test point in between 1 and 2. So I'm going to look at f prime of 1 and a half. I threw that into my function earlier and I got negative 1 and a half, which is a negative. And then I'm going to test a value greater than 2. So I'm going to test 3. 
And when I put 3 in there, I got out a 12, which is a positive. So now I can switch that to the more common uh, interval notation by saying, get out of my own way here, by saying that this function increases from negative infinity to 1, and again from 2 to positive infinity. And it decreases between 1 and 2. So this is the information that I'm trying for tonight. All right. With that one example, I think you're ready and equipped to do more like it when in the day ahead. So, till then, bye.